Boom, hello replay viewers, let's go this way. So I made a little progress today, about 35 miles, and ended up here in Rockland Harbor. And I could have scoped it earlier in the, in the afternoon, but everything that's of interest is into the sun. So here we are at sunset, and kind of good timing. Hi, hi. Hi, Paul. The, uh, the weather's been fairly warm, but not brutally hot. Uh, we had a bit of, hi Fran, a bit of wind came up just after I arrived, which as far as I'm concerned was perfect. And here's a, uh, a late arrival. Someone's been out for the day and they're coming in. And I'm kind of curious what kind of boat that is. It, it looks a bit like mine, but, but it, isn't, it isn't exactly. Hi Greg, good evening everybody. So you're looking at a uh, what they call a canoe stern boat because the back of the boat is the stern and that's rounded off like a canoe is sometimes. And it has two jibs, so it's a cutter. The uh, inner jib is, is much smaller than the outer one and is better for uh, much windier conditions, which almost never happen. Ahoy there! <laughs> Hi, Minty. Let me step over to this side. Seems like I should be... I have to watch where I put my feet. So I don't stand on on a line. It's a bit of I should show you what's down here. Uh, so there's there's two ways, there's three ways of, of staying in Rockland Harbor. One is you can put your anchor down. No, this is Rockland Harbor in Maine. Star Island is about oh I'd have to guess 150 miles away. Um, here I'll do a slow pan. It just was fun to see that boat sliding in at the end of the day. This is a, uh, I have to watch my feet again, this is a gigantic harbor, uh, which has its pluses and its minuses. Uh, the pluses is, is there's lots of room. The minus is, depending where the wind's coming from, it can be really rough. And it's also a busy spot with fishing boats and, and very large yachts sometimes. And, and they don't bother to slow down until they're at their dock. So you'll be over here and all of a sudden kapow and you're rolling left and right like a crazy person. So there's Rockland Harbor. Somewhere behind, dead behind me is a, uh, a construction barge on a mooring. There it is, head on. This is a pretty old wooden sailboat. So I was saying there's three ways of, of spending the night here. One is outside, you just outside the mooring field, you put your anchor down. That's completely fine. Uh, way over yonder, this harbor is kind of split into two parts, and the middle is right here. The Coast Guard station kind of splits it. Uh, so off, off yonder in the distance, quite a distance, are rental moorings for a large sum of money for what you get. $30 a night or, or something like that. Um, some people like to pay, but you know, if you're here for a few nights, it starts to add up. Uh, so what I learned years and years ago, if you look around, there's empty moorings over here, and no one's checking on you. So the trick is to identify a mooring that no one's going to be wanting, that no one's coming back to it. So this one, I didn't go all the way in, I just picked up an easy one. This one has a sticker from 2019, so they haven't paid their, their mooring permit fee for this year. So that's, I didn't know that until I actually attached to it, but I said, oh, no one's going to be coming to this one if their uh, permit hasn't been updated. So the reason, you, the way you can tell a mooring isn't going to be in use is when you pick it up. Look at this. Now this is after it's been in the sun for six hours. This rope's been in the water for, for a considerable time. And you can't be squeamish when you go to pick one of these things up. You know, you. I think somewhere over the side of the boat is the, the pickup buoy, but I had to grab onto this, which was wet and, and full of these tiny, tiny little mussels. See this black, all this looks like peppers? Those are tiny, tiny little mussels that are growing. And uh, so they've had, they've had about six or seven hours to dry out. Uh, so a slimy mooring is a good sign that no one's coming back to it. But you also don't know what shape it's in. So it's always a good idea to back up and give it a pull. And, and twice in my life, twice the chain has snapped. So then I was left with, with a sunken mooring and a ball 
that wasn't attached to anything. So, uh, <laughs> so the first time that happened, I wasn't quite prepared for that. I hadn't thought things through years ago. What happens when you snap a chain? Uh, so I had to cast the ball off and let it drift away and, and go and get another one and, and hoped, <laughs> hope nobody was paying attention. Uh, in a certain sense, that's, that's doing somebody a favor because if the mooring hasn't been maintained that much, uh, obviously the owner's not coming back to it and not everybody tests the mooring, so I kind of thought that, that sinking a mooring was, was better than being the next person to find out that you're no longer attached and drifting away in the night. Do I anchor? I anchor a lot, <clears throat> but you can see that around here... Hello from Pakistan! That's amazing! What, uh, what city are you in, in in Pakistan? So I have a friend, I think she's in Lahore. Tough times down there. Uh, so I came in here and, and the farther in you go toward, toward land is, is quieter. Remember I was talking about big waves? They, they come from over this way. Hey there, hey there back, Islamabad, okay. It must be, uh, let me think, it must be very, very early in the morning or very, very late at night, like 4, 4 a.m. or something for you. Uh, so you get the, the fishing boats and the, the large yachts, they all want to go over there. And, and so the more you can get over into this section, the farther up toward land, the, the less waves you get. Now today wasn't bad, this whole year is, is bizarre. So there's, there's many, many fewer boats uh, going around than, than usual. 5 a.m. See, I'm pretty good with times. I, uh, I haven't talked to my friend for about a year, but yeah, I think, I think it's almost 8 p.m. for me too, wherever you are. We're on the same, same time zone. Um, so I've lost my train of thought. There was that boat. Yeah, at Ama, Amazonius. I'm not sure where that is. Um, I think that boat is is also one of those freebies hunting around for a free mooring. Um, there's a lot of empty moorings because people haven't put their boats in. And obviously the one I'm on, they haven't even paid for the permit. Um, I might be here another night. I'm going to drop this mooring in the morning. Uh, at the least, I'm going to a fuel dock and load up my fuel tank. And I'm also going to hope, I'm going to call up and ask if the place I'm going to get the fuel can also do... Oh, Brazil! Okay! Oh, that's awesome! Wow! You're way, you're way down there. I hope it's not too hot for you. I was just watching a, a whole bunch of, of videos by this lovely couple in Brazil working on a, working on a 44-foot sailboat. They've been working on it for a year, and, and they still have some, some projects to go, but they were hoping to go in pretty soon. Um, I didn't know there was much sailing in Brazil, but apparently there's, there is some. And uh, if you can afford a boat, I know they're expensive because of the tax, situ tax situation. Uh, so over here, it's getting a little dark now. This is the, uh, I wouldn't call, exactly call it, call it a, a cruise ship terminal. But there are, in this area, there's eight wooden schooners. Oh, that's cool. They worked on the on boats. Over here, there's eight wooden schooners. Six of them are out of service. Uh, two are in service right now. There's enough customers. And, and they base over here. And on, on uh, Sunday mornings or Wednesday mornings when they go out. Uh, yeah, Mindy, I, I think I'm going to Florida. It's just a matter of, of being completely isolated from everybody and even not touching the knob that opens up the gate from the dock onto the uh, onto the uh, the main property I'm I'm going to try to buy a whole lot of food uh, packaged food before I leave and canned food so I really don't want to be going into the grocery stores what is the name of this body of water this is Rockland Harbor in Maine it's a fairly large harbor years and years ago back when when the government had had money for such things you probably can't really see it what's the weather uh, the weather hasn't the weather the weather's been 85 to a little higher oh hello 85 ish um, you can see the winds blowing not not too much but it's blowing uh, humidity isn't brutal but it is humid 
So years ago, the government had, had money, back when the government had money for these things, starting over there, behind the, behind the boat, going all the way across, they built this giant jetty, and it blocks off a lot of the uh, entrance. But it doesn't mean it's calm, it's still storms. If you get a storm from that direction, then here it's going to be awfully rough. Uh, but at least you have, you have some help. This wouldn't be much of a harbor if, the, uh, if that jetty wasn't there. Oh my goodness, the water is cold. Uh, so my, my fish finder also has a temperature sensor. And let's see, I was going along in the ocean today and it was 58. And then I got up to, uh, to kind of on the other side of that land, a little, a little closer to shore. And it, the temperature went from 58 to 64. That's still not very warm. Um, People do go swimming, but they don't stay in for too long, unless you're a child. Children have, have higher metabolisms. Uh, no, I'm not exactly near Bar Harbor. Uh, to get to Bar Harbor is another uh, two days. I'm, I'm going to guess it's about 70 miles or 80 miles, maybe 90 miles. I've only stopped in, in Bar Harbor once because it's a lousy place to stop. Yeah, Mindy, you're... Is, there's been a huge heat wave around here, except if you're near the water, then, then you know, the, the wind blows over the cold water and cools off a little bit. So, as I was coming along today, it was fairly cool. And then I got up to, uh, to somewhere, see on the other side of this land, there's a, there's, that's how I came in. You have to pass along on the other side of that, that land and go around to the end and then double back. So at some point in there, as I was getting closer to shore, there was a big change in the in the hot, the sticky hot air became became predominant. So that's what I'm getting now because it's blowing across uh, this this part of Maine. But if I went out to sea, I think the temperature dropped 10, at least 10 degrees, if not more. Um, there's a, a government website that has buoys nautical buoys that talk of report wind speed, wind direction, sometimes wave height, and sometimes water temperature, and, and, so you, and, and definitely air temperature. Um, so you can, you can, I have an app that does that, that looks up those, those buoys. So I can, I can give a quick glance, I'm curious about the wind speeds, but if you tap on one, you get the, the air temperature. And so out, out yonder, that's off, off in the direction of the ocean. Out yonder, it was 68, and in here it was was 78 or 85. So that's that's the difference between being over cold ocean water and and hot hot air coming off the uh, the land. So it's getting pretty dark here, but fortunately the camera has a good good lens. Nice sunset over there in the in the hills. Let's see, there's somebody going along behind me in a rubber dinghy. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. I have my mic on. And, and, and here, look, can you, can you see what's happening? Someone's gone by probably five or ten minutes ago. So I'm, I'm holding the... I'm keeping my, this, this camera steady and the boat, you can see the boat's doing its thing. Someone went by and left a big... big not, not too big of a wave, but... You know enough to make me bob around. Um, there was one monster wave earlier, and I just done a, a round of cleaning and moved my little bicycle that's underneath the bed. Moved my bicycle a little bit, and all of a sudden there was a crash, and the bicycle had tipped over a little bit and, and hit the side, which is completely fine. Um, didn't hurt anything, but I wasn't expecting it. I should have known better, because this is a rough place. Um, and that's why in, in, in other years I would go in there as far as I could to get away from those waves. Sometimes, let's see if I can turn around, I have to watch my step. Sometimes I've come in, I didn't want to deal with all this, and off in the distance you can turn off to the left and anchor over there by that, that bit of land, just to be completely away from everybody. Or so you would think, but you're you're well away from the mooring field, so every boat that's going in or out is at full speed, and, and you get bobbled around uh, over there until nighttime. 
then it, then it quiets down considerably. Um, now I saw a, a blinking buoy. So uh, another thing is, Maine has is not like like Seattle, Washington, but it's still pretty good. They have an extensive system of ferries that service the nearby islands. A lot of those ferries start from here. Off in the distance, you can see one laid up. Um, I don't see any any docked. Just this one laid up. So those ferries are there are definitely this year on a reduced schedule. But there's there's quite a, a number of islands they service, and their their islands aren't too too nearby, so they're they're kind of longer trips. Uh, some of them. So so those ferries go out. There's a a buoyed channel over there that's been dredged and somewhere there's a red buoy that's blinking over there there's another one over here and they're all kind of mixed in with the boats um, but those blinking red buoys help help the uh, ferries and the fishermen there's not too many people on boats like mine that would be going in the night uh, I'm, I'm kind of the exception because I will I will go in the night if it's easy enough to leave uh, if I was going to leave here in the dark, it might be a little tricky. I want my spotlight. If I was leaving from this spot in the dark, I'd want my spotlight and, and then I could see... See, none of these boats at, at night are lit up. This is a designated mooring field, so you don't have to put an anchor light on. It would be too impractical to have anchor lights on if you're in a mooring field all summer. You'd run your battery down and, and then the battery would be dead and you couldn't couldn't start your engine and nothing would work. So there's the Coast Guard station over there. There was some announcement on the loudspeaker. I've, I'm kind of bracing myself. Here come some more little little waves. Uh, whatever made those waves is, is long gone. They haven't gone out, so they must have come in. I just didn't notice. But things will quiet down in about an hour. And if you're on a boat long enough, you get used to bobbling around just a bit. Um, I've, I've had my share of excitement in this harbor, which is why I've learned to, uh, <laughs> to, to go in there, go as far in as possible. Um, today, though, I wasn't too, too eager. So I stopped here, and the first thing I did was I started an oil change going. My oil, cha oil change system is a bit slow. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very clean way of changing oil. You put a tube into the dipstick hole and there's a canister and you use a handle and, and like a little bicycle pump and you pump a vacuum on the canister which then sucks the oil up through the hose. The only trouble is the hose I have and, and the previous hose I had they, they both are, are sensitive to being too hot, and when they get too hot, they collapse. So the oil still comes out, but much slower. I, I had another hose, my first one, and, and it didn't collapse. So when that, one, when that canister wore out, for, something went wrong with it, so I replaced it. And I made the mistake of throwing the hose away before the new one came, and oh my goodness, the hose collapses. I couldn't do anything about it. Too late. And eventually, I bought bought a, another one, hoping to get a better hose. But it's still the same, same old soft hose. On like who, who would, who would tell you a hose that collapses when it's hot and you're pumping out hot oil? Something someone dropped the ball there. Um, it's not been enough of an irritation for me to uh, to try to find another hose with the right diameter that doesn't collapse when it's hot. Uh, I only change the oil every 100, 100 hours, so it's not like I do it do it all that often. Over here is a, a construction company, a boat construction company. So behind me there's a few of their, their work barges they just have in storage tied up. And if you have some large marine job, they can, can base, base from here and they have a little tugboat and work barges and imagine they could put put a small crane on one of those barges if they had to and, uh, and go out to your site and, and build what you needed to be built. Now I can hear, I can hear someone, some lobster boat chugging along. So I was in this area once years and years ago 
and I was noticing today and yesterday there must it must be around a, does anyone tell me if it's almost a full moon it must be awfully close to a full moon or we just had one um, because the tides are, are extra low and a little extra high yeah there's there's a boat with a red light on top peeling out full speed ahead um, so we have we have minus tides right now and I was here one year when it was like the, the most minus tide of the year. It was like minus one and a half feet. Um, so I was saying how this section in front of me, there's some red buoys and there's some green ones too, that was dredged for the ferries. But well, the lobstermen are used to just tooting around wherever they want to go and, and not worrying about the dredged part. Well, this poor lobster boat got into a bit of trouble with a minus one and a half foot tide. He got into the mud and almost didn't get out. That was, <laughs> that was a bit embarrassing. Uh, I think it was early enough in the morning that I was probably the only person that noticed. Next full moon is August 3rd. Well, Paul, why are we having, Paul, yeah, well, why are we having minus tides? I don't, think, I don't think it's a new moon. Is it a new moon then? Yeah, it must be a new moon. That's two weeks, to August 3rd is about two weeks away. So it must be a new moon low tide. Thank you for checking. I don't know if you can hear that. It's kind of a low, low noise. But there's that, that boat in the distance. You might be able to see its wake peeling out. And in about five or 10 minutes, we'll get the, uh, the waves. Uh, I can understand why they don't want to go slow for a bunch of uh, recreational boats with, with, with almost nobody uh, on them to, to care. Plus, this harbor can get awfully rough if the wind is the from the opposite direction. I heard in the distance somebody tooting their horn. And I think it's a little late to toot your horn for sunset. Earth is flat. Hello, Earth is flat. Um, so this scope's about to end due to, to lack of daylight. I, I tried once scoping at night, and I have to say, it was not a success. Not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. So for you, for you late arrivals, here's my uh, my mooring situation. I picked this 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 very dirty rope up late this morning at 11 o'clock when I came in. This was all wet at the time, and I had all these all this all this black stuff as tiny little muscles that are just starting to grow, and a whole bunch came off of my hands, of course. So it's had it's had all day half a day to dry out and there's the rest of it up there yeah this this camera does better than it actually is 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 outside it's it's getting darker here but the camera is making up for it um, so if you ever need to find a a mooring that's not going to be in use by someone coming back look for one that's slimy see if the boat's on it this this piece is out of the water but if the boat's not been on it for a long time, it's in the water and it starts to get all this growth. So that's the trick in Maine. There's lots of moorings in Maine and, and there's more moorings than boats. So my philosophy is if it's a slimy rope, pick it up and give it a test. Make sure it doesn't break. Make sure this chain is strong. There's a little pretty, pretty old wooden sailboat over here. Thank you for the blue hearts. Well, technically they're free moorings unless the owner comes or someone comes and says, what are you doing here? Uh, I don't know if I, I think that might've happened to me once here. Cause I, I wouldn't get on a mooring and then just leave. I wouldn't go rowing off because that's how you get into trouble. Um, but I'm on the boat. If someone comes easy enough to, uh, to drop it and, and pick up another one. And especially this year, there's so, so many fewer boats in, in the water than there usually are that, that finding an empty mooring is, isn't hard. And it sure beats putting, I mean, putting the anchor down is not, not troublesome. Uh, but you should have seen how much, how much mud I've, I had come up in the last, uh, I'm on a ball. No, I'm not on a, a ball. It is something you'd find on shore. I'm on a mooring. This is a mooring ball. attached to my cleat. Boop! It's on my bare feet. 
A bollard is something you'd, you'd usually use to have ships would tie up to a wharf and they'd attach their lines to bollards which are fairly substantial metal posts stuck into the ground. All right, so I don't have to lecture the sailor. Uh, some places, some very old places, uh, and I can think of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard might have some, and they use old cannons as bollards. What a great way to recycle old cannons. And I'm not talking about Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm talking about Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And ironically, the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in New Hampshire is that actually it's in Maine, it's in Kittery, Maine. There is a, a Supreme Court case trying to decide what, where, which state this island was that has the Portsmouth, it's been called the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard since 1800. It's an island in the middle of the river. The, and the wide part of the river is, is between it and Portsmouth. Okay, dashing away. Yeah. Yeah, someone you know, why, why, what are you going to do, what do you do with an old cannon? I guess you let them pile up for a while, but unless you melt them down, you know, you know jab them into the ground and that's, that's, you know, they're shaped right. You know, the heavy ends down and the, the narrow ends up, that's a little bit uh, tapered in the, in the middle. They, they make perfect bollards if you don't have a large ship, if it's like something, something, you know, from the 1800s or early 1900s. But anyway, I said I'm going to scope out. Now it really is starting to get dark. I, I am blessed by, by one thing and no bugs. And up in front of me is also a, a fish plant and it's not running. Yes, no, I'm not, I'm not fishing. I'm, I'm just on a sailboat going around for the heck of it. Um, up in front of me is a fish plant and it's not running. Which is good because if it was running, the smell would be would be back here. I don't mind that smell too much, but having fresh air is better than fish plant air, right? So anyway, what can we end the uh, the picture on? Yeah, the uh, the mosquitoes there aren't any out here. I'm I'm far enough away. You'd think the wind would be blowing them out, but but in front of me is is the city of Rockland, and not too many mosquitoes are, are growing or thriving downtown. Um, here's my neighbor checking on his situation and off in the distance the lighthouse you might be able to see the lighthouse flashing that's the very tip of the breakwater you're in texas oh my goodness must be wicked hot you know up, up here in new england we say wicked must be wicked hot in texas and i hope you are right from that that hurricane hannah that was tearing things up the other day well best of luck to you in, in texas and thanks for checking in so i'm going to scope out Thanks everybody for, for letting me show you a bit of Rockland Harbor and uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care everyone.